Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is an electrode quiver. I was told it doesn't work. So there, let's have a look at the plate on it. So it's an SWP electrode quiver, 1141. It takes 110 or 240 volts and 80 watts either. So that should be a third of an amp, roughly. It takes five kilos of rods and it has a switch here for switching off in the center, 240, 110. You can see I've opened up the bottom on it because I'm a bit confused. Let's switch it on. The power's live, you see the power meter there. Let's have a look at this. So it's got 220 volts coming into it. Turn it over here. Zero. Turn it this way. Both neons come on. This neon says 240 and this neon says, well, nothing because the cover, little screw on cover is missing. Screw in cover is missing. I don't actually know if it's a neon. I presume it's a neon. I think it's working, but it's drawing 400 watts. So even if it was on 110, on the 110 circuit, and I was giving it 240, I, my numbers say that it should still only draw um, 160 watts, not three times that, which is a bit tricky. There's a fuse down on the side. There's a fuse down on the side, that little red fellow. Somebody has soldered a bit of tinfoil onto the fuse. Soldered it now, I think make it a pretty good job let's try taking that out actually while live to see what happens oh interesting so there's your fuse with a bit of tin foil i think soldered on maybe not maybe it's just pressed on over time so that fuse Bizarrely, that fuse has killed the 110 volt light. This is weird. Okay, okay. And it's gone to 88 watts, which I would call 80 watts. Let's just try switching it back. We're getting nothing there. Zero watts. But if I put it over there, this light's coming on back to 88.9. This is quite bizarre. It was heating up before at the 300, 400, it was 350, and then now you saw it at about 400. If I open the end of the quiver, there is a bit of heat in it. They're not meant to, you know, it's an oven, but it's not meant to be red hot. There's certain types of welding rods that like to be hot before you use them, and so you keep them in a quiver like this. It also drives off the damp in regular welding rods and stuff like that. It's meant to make some types of welding very easy and very continuous. I don't know what's going on here. And you don't know who's been playing with this before as well. That's the other issue. I think the thing to do is to try and decipher the wiring here. So I'm going to have a potter at that off camera. It is labeled with different uh, cable ties with different numbers on them. Plus, minus, um, 120, 120. So it should be possible to try and figure out something and where they're going. It's a bit of a nest. All right, so you can see something says 220 down there. Got power coming in, I'll have to trace that. You've got four blocks, these ceramic insulated fellows. I think they're just connectors. Um, the element, I think, is coming off these wires here in behind, uh, inside in fiberglass or something, some kind of mineral wool. There's one of the neons that goes down to there. Hopefully this will be clear. I think I've done it right. This is the switch up here. This is the power coming in over here. Fuse and lamps. This doesn't have any of the elements on it. Then this is the main block here with the elements included. So this is all of the connections. So a live comes in over here and seems to go to an element. Just one wire. Neutral is on this side directly in. You've got a wire called 110. You've got a wire called 220. Then on these two in the center, you've got a wire called 220 and another one called 110. So presumably this is a 
110 element and this is a 220 element but that doesn't seem to make sense because of the switching just yet the switch only has a connection on one side so you've got a fuse on one side all right in the center you've got it coming through here and the fuse which is not how i would do it and then you've got this going to an element i don't really know where it goes it just disappears into the into the ether in behind everything else on this side you've got nothing now i could disconnect everything from the block and test for resistances through the these uh presumably the coils of some kind of element wire on this one here you've got both of the lamps connected as well so you've got five connections on the leftmost switch you've got the neutral the two lamps the two elements on this one you've got a 220 volt lamp the midpoint on the switch um on this one you've got the 110 volt lamp and the fuse and the other side of the fuse goes to the midpoint on the switch so with the fuse in and the switch on the 110 volt side so if the switch is pointing to 110 it's connecting these two fellows if it's pointing over here it's connecting these two so when it says 220v it's really doing nothing when it says 110v it's joining up this side where am i going with this so maybe someone had hot wired it it's my thinking to put both elements on the one loop and that makes sense because that's what was coming on both lights were coming on uh when the fuse is in when you have it switched here it's going into this element wire and it must be just capturing everything else uh, through here I, I don't know uh when you take the fuse out and you switch it you have power coming in on the 220 uh, what's what's labeled as 220 only and the 220 lamp comes on so i think as it is with the fuse thrown away it'll work just fine so i wonder can i do that i think it just works fine if it's taking 80 watts that's what it's rated for so i've glued this on look but if i break that tin foil there is a wire in there so maybe it'll still work i don't know we'll have to check that now let's put that into its holder i'll screw that back in and we'll plug it in again so let's switch it on it says fitted with a 3 amp fuse but it's got a 13 amp in it and i know that that works because uh, we've seen it going before put the fuse back in there that red fellow let's try turning on 240 volt even though we kind of know it's not going to do anything nothing turn on 110 now i'm getting nothing out of that right that's a bit of a mystery let's take the fuse out again i'm not sure why this would make any difference put it on 110 nothing this is quite a mystery now. So I haven't changed anything, I've just looked at it. So the unit is warm. Mystery. If we're getting power to here, then the plug's getting power. All I can think is that there's a thermal fuse inside, or thermal trip, not a trip, a thermal switch, uh, turning it on and off. And it's maybe hot enough now. Or it could have a dicky switch, that's also an option. But I'm not seeing any action out of that. So what I'll do is I'll make this again. Actually, let's test that first. I don't know if that's working or not. Let's test this. I should hear a beep if it's got continuity, although I don't see why it would if they'd wrapped it in tinfoil. No, okay. So before with the fuse out and it switched to 110 volts, it was coming on. Let's see if I have a similar fuse. So I think this is a 2 amp fuse, hopefully. Uh, let's turn it off first. We'll know pretty quick then if it flashes. I've still got 0 watts over here. Um, nothing. Like it's warm but it's not hot. Oh, I'm terribly, terribly confused. So what else could be off then? The switch could be a complete dud. That's something that I did think of before, but I know it's only wired to one side of the switch. So if you were out on site, and your switch was acting up, what would you do? You'd have to have a go at it. Right, so the switch is off now. Let's put the switch over there, it plugs out. I think that switch is rubbish. I'm not getting any continuity across the switch. Right, try it the other way. Okay, so I'm getting it on that side. So if I move this wire over to here, I, I think that switch is a dud though. So I'm not, I can't feel anything on that now. 
Um, right, let's pull that off. I'll pull that off and move the wire to the other side, and then at least it'll say 220 and work, and I can have the fuse out. How about that? We'll try that. It's also a possibility if I ever put it back together, put the little plate on upside down. That's also an option. I think I have one of these switches inside. Yeah, I would have thought that the brown wire with the blue tab on it should be over here because that goes to the 220 side. And the red one goes to the fuse. And the other side of the fuse goes where? The other side of the fuse goes to the 110 side. So maybe I should put the red one on what's the 110 side. I don't know. I think actually this one should be in the middle. The red one that goes to the fuse should be on the 110 side. And this one should be on the 220 side. Then I think it would work. I think it's a bit mashed up at the moment. So let's, let's do that. And then it should work with the fuse in or out. But the switch is the issue then. Let me see if I have a few switch like this before I do any more faffing. In my supplies I found this one. It's slightly bulkier. And it has two wires for each of the points. But that's okay. It's got screws. It's off. Seems to work at that position. The reason it's got extra is because for motor control you can use it to cross over. Right, it seems to work. So let's take it apart. I don't know what the best way to tackle this is. It's got a big, big washer and a small one. It has... Um, these connectors on it and I think you can use them to switch direction on a motor but I well I must have kept it in for something like that but I don't need it for that so these cables can go so I've just pulled off the old one um I was talking to myself when not on camera brown to the center is what I'm going to do that's the element and then 220 on one side and 110 on the other and to disable 110 I guess you just take the fuse out 110 should be on this side because that's the way the lighting works so I need to keep the lighting and the little label on top the same. So the moral of the story is keep everything because you never know when you're going to need that switch that you pulled out of what maybe was a floor polisher or something. Yeah, so basically two elements were wired together or two lines were wired together before and the switch was a bit dicky. And I'd say I just got lucky that the switch worked that first time I tried it. Right, that's not touching anything. All of the wires are insulated, so I'll put this ring back on on top. There's two screw holes up on top here behind the plate. And I wonder, did they hold on something else in the past? Maybe. Yeah, there's two little holes here and here that maybe had something on them before. Right, plug. Where are you? Over here. So it's in the off position at the moment. Let's switch that on. Now, you see everything here. Maybe that's better. Uh, we're going live. We've no fuse in, so on 220, 240, it should light up and draw 80, 90 watts, okay? And then on this side, nothing should happen. Switch it off, put this in. What's 90 times 3? 270, it was higher than that before. Let's put the new fuse in. I don't know if this fuse is the right rating. But because... We only want it running on 220. I'm probably just going to leave the fuse out. 110. Light on that side. It's drawn 340 watts on that side. Can't remember what it was drawn before. It, it shouldn't have all the wires going through it. But, but there you go. It's a bit vulnerable, these guys being plastic. Like, that one's clearly gotten knocked off. I'll put the dead fuse back in. That's what I will do. And then it's safe and it can only be run at 80 watts, which was the desired wattage. Okay, I'll put it back together, but that's the job done. Someone's been in there before messing with it. Now, it might be that it wasn't getting hot enough fast enough and they messed around with it like that. I don't know. It's a simple enough thing, quite robust looking. Uh, seems to be working again. So, super. Well, what I'll do is I'll give it a test, but you probably won't hear anything back. I'll just leave it switched on to 220 now. For a while and see if it gets hot um maybe i'll do that for 10 minutes and then report back to you well this is heating up this is an elcon 10 amp 250 volt switch that's way over for what it is like ow. 
one amp should do it maybe kind of inviting trouble on myself here just want to see what's in here see if they're burnt out or what oh, it just keeps falling back when i do that right i'll put a wedge in under that side Oh, the plastic's falling apart. Right. Uh, something's broken there. The top cover or something. Yeah. Uh, I'd say there's nothing wrong with it, actually. It's just that a load of snot has gone in between that bit of plastic on top the cover has broken fallen in and i could put this switch back in if i wanted it should work just fine let's see if it closes up again and works might be too high now because of that this is like a top cover plate it should just sit like that it's deteriorated just i don't know from cook being cooked I don't know if this is going to fit now. Let's try. That's got a little spring-loaded plunger in it. Put it in the center position and try and close this back. So we probably lost our IP rating for dust, but it would never have been waterproof anyways. Let's give it a squeeze. So it's probably just those little bits of plastic getting stuck in underneath it. Elcon, come on. I haven't got enough hands here. There we go. Oh, something's not right. There we go. One, two. That's uh it's it needs that piece of plastic on top, it's way too loose. I get it with the vice grips. I need to bridge over it a bit and give it a squeeze. Still drawn 92 watts there. Uh, that's the plastic crushed. I think whoopsie is the word for that. But we're back on. Yeah, you could. It's, uh, I've crushed in that plastic there, which was a bit stupid of me. Let's just test it though. Let's just try to prove a point here because uh, if that plastic on top hadn't deteriorated, we might have been okay. You can't see that. There you go. No, it's an audible signal, so seeing it won't help much. But right, it should be on. It should be off. It should be off. It should be on. The switch was a dud. Proven. There's a little bit of heat on this. I'm going to turn it so you can put this handle leg under it. And then 55, 68. I had 109 there for a minute. Briefly 108. So it's warming up and it seems to be working. If I leave it for longer, maybe it would click in and out. I don't know. I don't know yet if that's going to happen. So I'll just leave it. Um, but it seems to be working. Put it down to a switch that was broken and then rewired for maximum power by the looks of things. Um, it's drawn 90 watts at the moment still. 89, it's falling a bit. It might get hot in about 10 or 15 minutes. So after 23 and a half minutes, the light has gone out and the quiver is warm. So I'll leave it a bit longer and see if it comes back on again. 23 something minutes, nearly 24 minutes and the light's back on again. Uh, to hurry it up, I opened the door at the end, let some of the heat out, and it came back on again shortly afterwards. So I think it's a success. This thing seems to work. In the orange here, I'll read it out, or maybe we can get in a bit closer, actually. Warning. Does it say dual voltage equipment? Ensure voltage selector switch is in correct position, 220 volt or 110 volts, before plugging in mains. In case of, in case of error, fuse will blow.
Okay, so that's the warning. So I think the lesson I've learned from this device here is don't trust what you see. If I thought I was trying to fix it based on what was presented to me, I'd look at it and go, I don't know what's going on here. That didn't make any sense. And so just taking time and puzzling through it and, you know, drawing a diagram and that, we got out. I'll never use it on 110. I'm never going to be on site. I may never use it. It was a gift. A gift's a strange term for something that's broken that you might like to fix and I don't want it back. You know, throw it in the scrap, it's worth, what, 20p as light iron? Chop the wire off, it's <laughs> maybe doubles in value. I don't know what you'd call it. Either way now, SWP Electrode Quiver 1141, you are working. And I guess we don't have the actual wiring diagram. I think I could bodge it up pretty quickly though. With a pencil. So now we've got switch to element. So if I redraw the switch here, three positions, I have element in the center or the odd wire. Then I have one going to position three, 220 volts. And I have this one going to fuse. 110V. And that's it. Uh, so that, that then is obsolete. But the power comes in and this, this thing here is still the same. Uh, it doesn't go to mid switch here. It goes to 220 switch. And there you go. That fuse is still the fuse, but then it comes from the fuse onto this side of the switch. Simple enough, really, and maybe that'll help you. I can't imagine that many people set off on a journey to fix one of these things that's been doctored like this, but, you know, there's a wiring diagram. <laughs> Questions or comments, leave them below. It's my afternoon gone. Thanks for watching. Think about subscribing. Oh, and uh, channel memberships, if you want to see videos, you know, a bit before everyone else. Just be a member and it helps to support the channel, especially if you've had value from this. Or uh, PayPal's down there too as a way of supporting the channel. Thanks for watching. See you later.